Welcome back. Hit subscribe, ring the bell, and follow me at DirtleMTG on Twitter to keep up to date with the most recent videos and other posts. You can help support this content by hitting like and share, and by checking out the links in the description below. Alright, it's time to dirtle. Greetings. Today we head back to Ravnica for a revisit with our favorite sergeant, Bel Borka. Subject to our ethereal investigations today, and containment possibly, are Malcolm and Breaches, the Reaper King, and Zura the Enchanter. The Reaper King wins the die roll and drops an ion. They cast a Jawbone Skulkin. Ah, good old Eventide. Zer plays an island, and they cast Ponder. I draw planes, and simply drop it to the field for the turn. The partner player drops a training center to the table, and they cast Mystic Remora. Back to the king, and a forest enters play. Fang Skulkin is then cast. I wonder if we will get to experience a full field of Scarecrows. The player moves to attacks and swings the jawbone skulking into the Zer player for one. Glacial Fortress hits the field for Zer. They then cast Spirit of the Labyrinth, stifling extra card draw. To me, I draw Impact Tremors. I drop a mountain and cast an Arcane Signet. Mystic Remora triggers for the first time. I can't pay the tax, and the partner player draws a card. Two of the partner pirates, and they pay to keep the Remora around on their upkeep. In their first main, they drop an Izzet Boiler Works, bouncing the training center back to their hand, and pass. The king drops a mountain to the field on their turn. Terry and Mauler hits the stack, and they move to attacks. Both Skulkin are swung into the Zer player, who takes 3 damage. Back to Zer, and Gary's Sanitarium hits the field. In combat, the spirit swings into the partners, and they take 3. I drop Pulphoros God of the Forge for the turn. I then drop a mountain, and cast my commander, Bel Borka. The partner player's turn sees them let go of their Mystic Remora and hits the bin. They then replay their training center, and then cast Aristic Study. Turian Mauler triggers for the first time this game, but in response to this, Zer cast a negate on the Aristic Study. The Mauler triggers again, and the turn ends with the Mauler getting two 1-1 counters and Aristic hitting the yard. The Reaper player casts a Wicker Witch for their turn and proceed to attacks. They swing with everything able at Zer, and the Zer player drops to 28. Zer's turn sees a swamp to the field. Hold for ransom is cast, getting the Mauler a new counter. The enchantment comes down into play, enchanting the Mauler itself, ending the threat for now. Zer moves to attacks, and swings their spirit at the pirates again, dealing three. To me, and Bell triggers for an exile off the top card of my deck. I exile a Fiend Hunter, and draw a Thematic Compass. Noticeably, this helps me get around the spirit of the Labyrinth's draw restrictions. I cast Talisman of Conviction, and follow that up with the Fiend Hunter from Exile to keep it around. When the Fiend Hunter enters, I exile the Fang Skulkin and pass. A Mountain hits the field for the Pirates, and then an Amphin Mutineer comes down. When it does so, it exiles the Spirit of the Labyrinth, replacing it with a 4-3 Salamander Warrior token. To the King, and a Plains lands on the table. Farmstead Gleaner comes to the field, and the player moves to combat. Wicker Witch and the Skulkin both attack the Zer player, and the Zer player intercepts the Skulkin with the Salamander token. Otherwise, the Zer player takes 3 damage. Zer's turn has another island to play. Their commander graces the stack, and the Mauler continues growing. Mine turn brings me a Giant Killer to Exile, and a Sacred Foundry to hand. I drop the Foundry and take 2, and then cast Chop Down, targeting the Salamander Warrior. Getting ahead of myself, I tap mana for another spell, but the token dies all the same. With that said mana though, I cast Pulphoros, and pass the turn. The pirate partner has a Path of Ancestry to play. Departed Deckhand comes down, followed by Kedis, which is worrisome. Reaper King's turn has them casting a Ghostly Flicker, targeting the Mauler and the Gleaner. They blink, and the Mauler is weaker now, but now freed from its Ransom effect. To Zer and a Plains comes to play. They move to combat afterward, and swing their commander at the Reaper King. When they attack, they get to tutor up an enchantment that's 3 mana value or less, and they search up as Kanta. Reaper King ends up taking 1 commander damage from the Zer player, and in their second main, Zer casts Solitary Confinement, and the Mauler continues its growth again. 
My turn has an Angel of Finality to exile and an Aligned Hedron Network to hand. I cast the Giant Killer from its exiled adventure, and when it comes into play, Paul Frost does the thing. I then cast the Angel from exile, damaging my opponents again. I also exile the partner player's graveyard. To combat, and I swing the four powered Bell Borka at the partners, dealing four commander damage. In the second main, I cast the Mac Compass and pass. Breaches hits the stack for the partner player, and they get to scry thanks to the Path of Ancestry. In combat, the Depard deckhand comes at me, and the Emfin heads over to Zur. I can't block the deckhand and take two, and Zur shrugs off the damage thanks to their solitary confinement. At the end of the turn, Zur activates the Sanitarium, and I draw a duplicate and discard Impact Tremors, thinking I can get it back later with Sun Titan. Moving to the Reaper King, and Xander's Lounge is dropped to the table. Lowerbound Scarecrow then hits the stack, and they pick red as the color. If they control no red permanents, that creature gets sacrificed. They move to attacks, and swing the Witch, Gleaner, and Mauler at the Zer player. Zer again shrugs off the damage, and I hope to draw some removal for that particular enchantment. Back to Zer, and they discard for the confinement and discard for Escanta. Two immediate attacks, and Zer does the swinging, tutoring up a Necropotence. It is activated five times after it comes into play and before combat damage. The Reaper player then takes another commander damage from Zer, and the turn ends with Zer gaining their five exiled cards from the Necropotence. My turn exiles Underworld Breach, and I draw a Banisher Priest. I activate my compass and grab a Plains to hand from my deck, and then drop the land. I pass without attacks. The pirates summon their other commander, Malcolm Keen-Eyed. They get to scry again thanks to their ancestry. Into the red zone, and Breaches is sent into the Reaper player, and the dock hand continues running into me. The Reaper player can't block, but now I am able to thanks to my commander, since it's a spirit. The Reaper takes 3 damage, and Kedis, Breaches, and Malcolm trigger. Breaches and Malcolm trigger once again for Kedis' trigger resolving, and the partner player exiles a Skullmut and a Mountain while gaining 2 treasure. In the second main, Merchant Ryers comes down, and with a ZTB, they try to keep Zert tapped down for as long as it remains on the battlefield. Scoodles goes to exile, and the turn rolls over. Creeper King's turn sees Scarecrow hit the field. Farmstead Gleaner is then untapped with its own untap ability, adding a 1-1 counter to it. They pass. To Zer, and they discard for Confinement in Azkanta, which flips into Azkanta the Sunken Ruin. In the first main, they drop a Hagra Blood Pit, and then cast Cabal Ritual, gaining 5 black mana. Some of this mana is then used to cast Hero's Downfall, targeting the Merchant Raiders. The partner player responds with a Mana Drain, countering the spell. Zer then casts Reprobation, again targeting the Raiders. This spell resolves, and the Raiders lose their abilities and become a 0-1. Necropotence is then activated 5 times, and the Zer player drops to 15. My turn sees Belborka exile planes, and then I draw a path to exile. Kind of ironic. I play a planes from exile, and then cast Sword of Hearth and Home. It resolves, and I equip the sword to Borka. I move to attacks, and swing my commander at the pirate player. They don't block and take two, and the sword triggers. I grab a planes from my deck, and blink the fiend hunter. The fiend hunter gets to resolve first, and I exile the merchant riders under it and then Pulphoros resolves to deal its 2 damage. I then cast Banisher Priest, and go to exile my Fiend Hunter under it, but having misread the card thinking it was like another Fiend Hunter, I decide just to target Zer. Pulphoros triggers again, and does the thing. I pass with mana up, and the mana compass flips into the Spires of Araska. Life total stand at 20 for the Pirates, 27 for the Reaper, 14 for Zer, and 32 for me. To the partner pirates and mana drain gives up the free mana, which happens to be three colorless. A flavorful coastal piracy comes down, and they move to aggression. Malcolm swings along into the Reaper player, and damage is good. They deal the two commander damage and gain their exile, draw, damage, and treasure triggers. They exile some lands and play the cliff chop retreat from exile. Sol Ring comes down during the second main, and they pass. The Reaper King attempts to resolve a Panharmonicon, but Zer is ready with a saw it coming. The spell gets countered, and the turn rolls over. Zer begins with discarding a card to Solitary Confinement. Mind's Dilation hits the stack, 
And again, the counters fly with an arcane denial out of the pirate player. Back to me, and the partner player and Zera draw some cards from the arcane denial delayed trigger. And I exile Otherworldly Journey and draw Oblivion Ring. I cast the Journey and blink the Angel of Finality out until the end of the turn. Moving to attacks, I swing my commander at the pirate player again, and in response to no blocks, I put my creatures with Pulphoros just once. Borka hits for 7 commander, and the sword triggers. I grab a mountain and blink Borka to untap them. I re-equip the sword in my second main to my commander, and then cast O-Ring. Once that's in play, I use the trigger to exile Solitary Confinement. At the end of the turn, Angel of Finality returns, and I exile the Zerg player's graveyard. Pulphoros continues his slow burn, and life tolls stand at 9 for the pirates, 21 for the reaper, 13 for Zerg, and 30 for me. The pirates begin their turn with a Vandal Blast on Overload. There are no counters this time, and the artifacts hit the bins. In combat, Preaches swings into the Reaper player, and Malcolm into the Zer player. I use my Spires to remove Breaches from combat to limit the amount of triggers the pirate player will get, and damage only gets through on Zer, dealing 2. Zer quits the game at this point, and the partner player gains their damage, exiled treasure, and draw triggers, ironically exiling my own Breaches. Temple of Epiphany hits the field in the second main, and they follow that scry up with Reflections of Ityara, choosing pirates. The Reaper King cast an unkicked Ride of Replication on their turn, making a new Turian Mauler. They move to attacks, and swing the 24-24 OG Mauler at me. I jump with Giant Killer, wanting to save the path for something else, and the turn rolls. On my turn I exile an Angel of Sanctions, and draw a Mountain. I play the land, and then cast Sun Titan, having both Maulers trigger when I do so. The Titan resolves, triggering the God of the Forge, and I bring back Sword of Hearth and Home. I equip the sword to my commander, and hope to blink my way to victory using Pulphoros. In combat, I swing my commander at the pirate player, but they simply intercept with the Amphin Mutineer. The Mutineer dies thanks to Borka being a 7-7, and I pass with my up for path, but sad to lose my angel. Depart Deckhand helps Malcolm become unblockable for the partner player, and they move straight to combat on their turn. Deckhand, Malcolm, and Breaches all swing, with Breaches going at the Reaper player, and the others at me. I use Arazka to untap Breaches, and then cast Path on against Malcolm. It goes back to the command zone, and the player gains an island. I end up taking two, and they get to exile a card and draw a card. Rogue's Passage comes down during the second main, and then Malcolm is recast from the command zone. The Molars trigger for the cast, and the partner player gets to scry. Back to the king, and they cast their commander for the first time this game. To aggression, and the larger Molar is assigned to my face. I chump with Banisher Priest, and take no damage. To exile on my turn is the Containment Construct, and to my hand is Hoffrey Ghost Forge, which is a new addition I've been itching to try out. Seems I have everything I need to begin testing it well, too, so I cast Duplicant. When it enters, I exile Breaches. The God of the Forge does the thing, and I hope to get rid of the Pirate Player this turn with those triggers. I then move to combat, and swing the Titan and my commander at the Pirate Player, forcing bad choices. With the Titan's trigger, I return the Banisher Priest, and exile the Reaper King, though doing so feels kind of bad. This gives Borka a nice boost, and they become a 12-7. Both of my creatures are blocked, and the Pirate Player takes no combat damage. In the second main, I cast Hoffrey and hope my plan stays intact. I pass, with the Pirate Player at 1 and the Reaper Player at 11. The partner player casts Pirate Ship, another flavor win, and they get a token of it thanks to Lit Yara. Rogue's Passage is used to make the deck hand unblockable, and they move to combat. The spirit is swung into me, and I take the two damage. When they hit, they draw a card. At this point, the partner player says good game, and they concede. Reaper's turn has them cast a Mirror Entity and a Hoof Skulkin. Two attacks, and they swing the 30-30 Mauler at me, I chump with the Fiend Hunter, and it dies. But when it does so, Hoffrey triggers and creates a spirit token of it. This comes into play, and I exile the 30-30 Marauder, while Porphros deals 2 damage to my opponent. My turn has the exile zone fill with Ephemerate, and I draw my Crafty Companion, which I can't remember why I included in this deck design, but maybe it'll become apparent someday. Anyway, I move to combat, and swing the Titan, Angel of Finality, and the Duplicant. 
Titan triggers, and I return impact tremors. The opponent's Molar blocks the Titan, and the Entity blocks the Duplicate. The Titan and Entity go down, and Hoffrey triggers to make me a Spirit Sun Titan. This has both Tremors and Pull Frost trigger, dealing 3 damage to my opponent. And then I return Giant Killer from my graveyard to play, triggering my enchantments again. This defeats my opponents, bringing them down to negative 1. Good game to my opponents. Whew, that was a lot of counter magic that game, along with some of the removal here and there. Zer and the pirate player were going at it, and it did seem to be the correct choice strategically. The Reaper player had taken a long time to develop their board and kept missing some land drops, and besides Porphros, I wasn't doing much to my opponents besides trying to keep them in check. Earlier on, I'd switch targets from Zer to the pirate player because I thought they might be a larger threat late in the game. Having played against that kind of deck before, I wasn't eager to find out. Thanks for tuning in to another casual commander game here on Dirtle Magic. Until next time, take time to relax outside the game.